Oh, that's awesome, Brett. <laughs> Did you get it? I probably heard it. So probably the audience over here probably got an audio at least of it, if anything. Well, now it's back to work. Um, it is Monday morning and uh, PT starts up again, but today I'm going to sick call so that I can start making my appointments for my uh, physicals and everything. Uh, part of the process, you know, their army, they have to also do a physical so they can check your uh, condition and everything and see what, uh, what type of uh, injuries or whatnot uh, are still gonna need uh, some help when you get out of the military and all that kind of stuff. Once I got back from the National Training Center, I was finally able to start kind of doing the process of getting out of the Army and doing some of those appointments. It was a little bit of a, it was definitely a late start, not a little bit of a late start, it was a late start. So I had to rush a lot of the stuff and didn't really get to maximize my time very well because of how close it was to actually getting out of the Army already. But, you know, I finally, once getting back from the National Training Center, got to get started on the transition part of it. Well, now it's another day closer to me uh, separating from the Army. Uh, this morning I did an ETS brief, didn't film any of it because it would be really boring for you guys to, to listen to and see and uh, probably wouldn't understand a lot of it unless you're already in the military. But um, basically just kind of described a lot of stuff I got to get done in order to go before I get out and everything. Um, I'm kind of doing a lot of this stuff kind of late in the process. If you're in the military and you're looking to get out, try to start getting a lot of this stuff done like probably like six months out. I'm like, you know, two months from going on from my terminal leave, you know, basically getting out of the army around then and just now getting some of this stuff done so it's kind of pushing the timetables on some of this stuff but um yeah getting there it's getting there so I had one episode where i got pretty creative and talked about what we do on mondays and even gave a little demonstration of how to turn on and how to start a humvee and today is monday so that is command maintenance day and what does that mean that means we spend the first half of the day working on vehicles here in the motor pool so we'll check underneath the truck, inside the truck, and all around the truck. So this way we can find what's wrong with the truck. Try to get it fixed. And that is what we do on Mondays for command maintenance. Let me go ahead and show you guys the inside of one of these suckers. This thing's definitely not as comfy as the probably an H1, H2, or H3 probably is. A lot more, uh, a little different. More military, I guess you might say. The way you start this thing isn't like a key and ignition. You got a little switch right here. Usually, right now it's running, but usually be in the off position. Move it to run, wait for the weight light to come off, move it over to start, crank it up like you normally would a vehicle. You got the little shift lever down over here, move it over and drive. An emergency brake right here. Got all our normal gauges. And of course, the uh, steering wheel is kind of a little bit thinner. And it's a lot louder than a normal uh, H3 probably would be. A lot of the ignitions are kind of like this though, this kind of style. A few are different. Some of your trucks have an electric starter kind of like this. Flip on the battery switch right here, turns on the battery, get this little button to start it. Also some differences about this type of vehicle is you got push button, drive, neutral, reverse, all that kind of stuff. Same with the headlights. Headlights all push button. Some of the other trucks have a different style of, uh, of headlight switch. Work a little bit differently like this. Unlock it right here, we're pushing up on this. Flip it all the way over, turn the lights on. Switch it off. Bring it all the way left, brings out the blackout markers. So if you were in the uh, night vision goggles, you see these little uh, red dots in the back of the truck. I think this is the only episode that I actually captured some footage of me doing PT to kind of show people what physical training actually looks like in the Army. I'm gonna go for a run this morning. Set that to grab my camera. Show you guys a little bit of uh, PT stuff. Shut up, homie! Let's go! This is the PT route. This is where you run the closest road off. 26.30 and 8. So we run on it. This is Obi. He likes to run. This is his favorite thing in the whole wide world. Wow! Too far!
Jesus. Now we're going to cool down. 14, All right, so there you go. So, so far, you've gotten a look at what it's like doing physical training in the morning. So, a little bit of it, anyways. And uh, also, what we do on Mondays uh, as far as command maintenance. We're on a roll here on this episode. Let's see what else I can get you. One of the classes that I got a chance to do before getting out of the Army was learn how to build a resume and kind of learning a little bit of the transition process of, you know, trying to transition from the military life to the civilian job market and how to, you know, maximize your um, higher ability, I guess you could say. Today I have a resume writing class. Uh, I got my stuff from that little TAPS thing that I did uh, the other week. Um, we kind of briefly touched on uh, how to do resumes, but this one was a little more in depth. I'm not going to say much. Okay, I mean Rosas. I'm going to make a resume. He's going to get a job as a stripper. I'm going to be a CEO of something. <laughs> Good luck. As it was getting closer for me to get out of the Army, I had to start getting some of my equipment together to be able to try to get accountability of it, to see what I was missing, what I had, and start getting stuff cleaned. And I put together a good little decent episode that kind of gave a tour of some of my Army equipment that I had. I've been in the Army for a long time. I have acquired a lot of equipment. Some of the stuff is green, some of it's desert colored, some of it's ACU colored. There's a pretty big variety of uh, equipment here. So I think now all you really can do is just grab a bunch of stuff, bring it on down into the basement, and start separating it and trying to inventory it and clean it, see what needs to be cleaned. I figure this is a chance to uh, get you guys a little more education on some of my military gear. Of course, not all of it, but we'll check out a few of the cool stuff. So let's check it out. This right here is the old style rucksack you used to have to carry around. Which got replaced by a much, much bigger one and an ACU colored one. The uh, old one had a metal frame here. And the new style has got a plastic style frame. Then there's the old Kevlar and the new Kevlar. A um, little bit of differences, just mostly the material, how it's made. This one has Velcro, has a little bit different padding. Inside, it's a little bit different style. And uh, again, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller looking. Then you have the old vest. And the new style vest. This is a lot harder to put on the other one, but it uh, provides you a little bit better protection stuff. Like that. There's other accessories that can attach to it if you want. But um, usually this is how I went. Oh, well, obviously I've been in uniform when I was in Iraq, though. But uh, there's other attachment stuff that goes on the shoulders if you want to add that kind of stuff. Uh, some more extra side uh, protection and everything, too. And these are the plates that go inside of them. A little, a little bit heavy. And of course all that stuff and much, much more uh, gets turned in, so I won't get to keep any of that stuff. I do get to keep this thing though, however. This is what you wear underneath the body armor now, uh, so that it's not so hot in the summertime when uh, you're in Iraq and everything. It kind of makes you feel like a superhero when you're wearing it. So there you go, there's a cool little view at some of the equipment. There's so much to show you guys, it would just take way too long to be able to show you guys. We'll see you guys hopefully next week. See ya.